Hello and welcome to Not Without My Sister. Today we're going to talk about a topic close to Rosemary's heart because she's constantly making me lie on her behalf to other people. Rosemary, why is it so much easier <laughs> to make other people lie on your behalf than it is to lie yourself? <laughs> oh my God, I remember when I like had my first jobs, you know, even if I was actually sick, I was like, I don't think mom, and, like, I don't think mom ever let me call in sick to spar if I wasn't actually sick, right? But it's so, I, I hated calling in sick. It was so, so, but I, w- but I would happily call in sick for you. Yeah, I know. That's what I mean. That's my question. So why is that the case? I think because there's no guilt involved for the other person. So like, I feel guilty about like lying to my job. But if I do it for someone else, I'm like, I'm only lying to your is it job. Guilt? You know is it I mean? guilt or is it the fear? Right. Because like, how many times have I asked you to call up and say like, say you're me? Because also we're in America. And nobody knows the difference between us. <laughs> oh my God. Sorry. Thing, okay, I could write a long list of times Beatrice wants me to pretend to be her. Making a hair appointment. Oh, thank, Canceling a hair appointment. Thank you. Confirming thank a hair you appointment. Thank you so much. Clarifying a hair appointment. What? Thank you so much. <laughs> Every single time. What else? Uh, I actually think anything that you had to call for, you would be happier to get to make me do it for you. I feel like we should probably be like, much more serious. I'm like, the fact that I, every time we have a laugh on this thing, on this thing, on this podcast... All I have is this vision of mom. It's like a it's like a holy vision of mom looking like Bernadette of Lourdes saying, he's are awful giggly. Well, let me tell you something about our mother. And this is actually a handy link up top of the episode. She hates fun. Our mother does not subscribe to our Patreon. Excuse me? Our mother does not subscribe to our Patreon where for $5 a month you can get an extra episode each and every Friday and you get your regular episode early and without any So we can say whatever we want. We can say whatever we want to better. Well, no, 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 because this isn't a Patreon episode. But. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. But. My point is, she obviously doesn't like the podcast that much. So she's not the person we're catering to. We're catering to the people who are like, like, your laughter is infectious. Oh, thanks. We love the goodness emanating out of your voices. Rosemary, why are you always laughing at your own jokes? That's Beatrice. <laughs> no, it's, and it's not even why. People don't blame us like that, Beatrice. They say things like, I love the way Beatrice always laughs at her own jokes. <laughs> yeah, they they're like, like the Beatrice. simpleton. I love the way the simpleton laughs at her own jokes <laughs> just as well. It's more like, it's more like what I, I think, I think subconsciously I do it to like get the laughter started. You know the way like I'm always the first to have a glass of wine at a party. I want to get the party started, you know. It's not for me. It's for the other. I do it to get the <laughs> laughter started. Yeah, you're a regular like, like I'd actually hire you now to just get a crowd going. What are they called? Like seat what, fluffers? Would be like a no, fluffer for the late That is late not show. what a fluffer is. A fluffer is on a porn no movie. You absolute weirdo. I, no, no, I know, I know what a fluffer is. I mean, how like, do you know that, like Mom? A comedic Mom, fluffer. Okay, no, I'm pretty sure that's not the term. And now, uh, now, it, like a, would you mind ex- a warm up? Oh, that's it. Thank you. Would you mind explaining? If Mom's <laughs> listening, could you mind explaining what a fluffer is, Rosemary? Oh yeah, sorry. So on the set of a porn movie, if the person with a penis on set is finding it difficult to get an erection usually somebody comes along and warms them up so might for example give them a little hand job or I mean I think they even might give them a little blow job if if that's what's required a blow job is where you put the penis into the mouth (laughs) and and you warm them up for the main act so that's what a fluffer is I don't really know why it's called fluffing but that's what it is and sorry, sorry, a hand job is when you hold the penis in either one or two hands and you move the hand kind of rhythmically up and down the shaft with or without the aid of lubricant. I can't. You made me do that, Beatrice. Mom is now literally keeled over on the kitchen chair. Also, Mom, I'd like to just clarify when Rosemary said it's when somebody on set, there is a, this is a designated individual. It's not just like... Oh, Philip, are you finished with the carpentry there? Could you go over there and fluff? <laughs> oh, no, sorry, Mom. This is a job. You could probably apply for it yourself if you wanted. <laughs> that was a step too far, Rosemary. That was a step too far. I wonder how many I wonder how many people you'd have to fluff in one day. God. And what the pay I, is like. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say the pay could never be good enough. You would love that job. But the pay could never be good enough. Beatrice, I don't know what you're talking about. I hate penises. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> God, I'd actually, I'd actually hate to be, your head would be wrecked. I'd hate that job as well. I'd be like, for God's sake. <laughs> You'd 
hate that job, Rosemary, because it sounds like very hard work, quite genuinely. <laughs> I'm not averse to a bit of hard Rosemary, work once in a while. on somebody moon. else's schedule. Oh, Can you yeah. imagine, just oh, as you sat down with your knitting needles, it'd be like, Rosemary, we need you again. <laughs> my knitting needles, just as I sat down with my nan on my episode of Love Island, my knitting needles. <laughs> Anyway, that, sorry, back to Beatrice laughs at her own jokes as a way to warm up the crowd. Apparently. Now we're all warmed up is all I have to say. <laughs> oh, God. Why is it so much easier to fluff someone oh. else than it is to fluff yourself? Is it? I just don't. No. Oh, my no, God, I don't no. think I could fluff somebody else. I just, I mean, on the other hand, like, we don't actually know how well it's paid. So, like, come back to me with that and I'll tell you if I could do it or not. No, I couldn't. I couldn't. On the other hand, is that a pun? <laughs> I couldn't. Don't ever wink no, like that again. Close it. your mouth when you're winking. <laughs> Can you close your mouth when you're winking? Because then you wouldn't be a very good fluffer. <laughs> okay, moving There's on. No winking involved. Mom is now very. Oh, mom has turned us off. And also, I'd say determine never to sign up for oh, Patreon if this is what she gets on the main You are feed. definitely going to get some irate messaging after this. You're the one who said Rosemary explain for mom what a fluffer is. I thought is. you were going to do it in objective terms. If that's not now goading. But you see, why was it so much easier for you Incitement to describe to that for me than it was for me to describe you, it? You answer that question. Why was it easier to make me do that than it would be to do because, it yourself? Because, I mean, both the act and the description. Because, Rosemary, the act I wouldn't want to do and you'd love it. And the description, because, Rosemary, I wouldn't want to mortify mom on air. And you don't have a problem with it and have never had a problem with it. And didn't sure, sure didn't she used to watch Midday and Expose? And I can imagine her with her digestive, her rich tea and her cup of tea sitting on the edge of the couch, just trembling in anticipation of what might come out of Rosemary McCabe's mouth. <laughs> if you pardon the can- As long as something wasn't going in, I'm sure she was fine. <laughs> Honestly, and you would say things that you would say the most shocking things. And then the worst part for mom was not only would she have watched on TV, but then she'd have it repeated to her by various people around the village oh, yeah, later that we week. Know. How do so many people watch TV? How do so many people watch this 3 p.m. show? And why are they all repeating to me what are the obscenities I've already heard coming out of Rosemary's mouth? <laughs> You know what now used to be great when I used to go down to Fairview, you'd get an awful lot because like Fairview, I feel like has quite an aging population and you'd get a load of like older ladies to be like, oh, I love you on midday. Oh, that me. was so nice. I know. And I mean, I'm sure there were some who hated me, but they didn't tell me. Thank God. Oh, yeah. Yeah, totally. Why is it so much easier to be nasty online? Well, we all know why, right? because because no, you're anonymous and non anonymous. So, well, maybe that's part of this because like really you feel quite anonymous calling up and cancelling my hair appointment whereas I feel a sense of obligation and mortification what if they give out to me whereas if they give out to you you're just going to say like yeah sorry I was busy do you know what I mean no sorry I'm probably just going to start crying (laughs) if they give out to me like I don't think it's going to matter that it's that they think they're giving out to you somebody starts giving out to me I'm going to start crying oh really probably you know what it makes me think though as well why is it so much easier to write things down in like a text or an email than it is to say them in person. Like I frequently have not arguments with Brandon, but like if I'm annoyed with him about something, I will frequently find myself not really consciously, but as soon as we're not together, I'm like, I'm going to text him about that. Oh. And that's much easier to me than actually saying it. In the well, moment. I think that's an easy answer to that. You don't like confrontation, but that's weird to me now. Oh, I don't. That's weird. I mean, but for example, think about like the, the couple of times that I got major phone bills, right? from uh, traveling abroad and accidentally having my roaming on. And I'd get home and like the literally, I wouldn't have made a single phone call, but they'd have charged me like a thousand dollars, you know? Mm. And I'd call up and I'd say, can I have to? And, and then to your point, I'd eventually start crying out of just frustration. Don will call up, shout at three people and get the money all refunded. Why is it so much easier now for him to do that? But like, if it's his thing, he'd be like, oh, I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow. But for me, he has no problem calling up and like complaining. On my behalf. I don't know if we have the answer to this question. But sorry, just just to give people, here's an actual helpful bit of information. I once got a bill for 1400 euro from O2 or 3 or whoever I was with for roaming, similar to that. And I called up and I was basically like, how, you know, how did this happen, blah, blah, blah. Oh, you know, it was because I was using my phone as a hotspot back when they charged like through the nose for that. I think it's usually included now. But anyway, and they basically were like, oh... You know, you used X amount of data, blah, blah, blah. And they were like, you know, you can pay it off over six months or something. And I was like, I'm never paying that off. I was like, I cannot pay that off. I'm not paying you 1400 euro for two days of use. I think I hadn't even left the country. 
And so they put me on to like a supervisor and then I like repeated the same thing and I was like, I'm not paying it. They put me on to a manager and the, and the manager was like, okay, how about if we, you know, cut it, cut it in half? And I was like, I'm not paying half. I was like, I don't have 700 euro. I'm not paying it. And they went, okay, how about if you pay a hundred? And I went, okay. <laughs> how is that a helpful tip? Said, I'm like, I know. Well, because I'm like, just keep saying oh. no, I'm not paying that. Oh. And then eventually you might get somewhere. But like in hindsight, I was sorry that I hadn't gone. No, I'm not even paying a hundred. Because like, I'm like, they folded pretty easily, actually. I mean, I was on the phone for about an hour, but still. Still, that was like a well-spent hour. Oh my God, Beatrice. If every hour I spent could save me 1,300 euro, I'd be rich. Er. Rich-ish. 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 Well. I'd have to actually make the money in the first place. Well, that's true. Because you didn't actually make money. You just avoided spending it. Well, actually, sorry, if, if I could avoid spending money, Oh, you're right. That would be most of my problem. God, you're right. The spending diaries would be so boring. I spent all day long on the phone. Did nothing. <laughs> spent no money. <laughs> yeah, maybe I would be like, I didn't spend any money. And also I saved, you know, so I'm minus. Oh, my God. Imagine if I had a week where I actually made money. I mean, like outside of my actual wages, that'd be amazing. Well, now I'm thinking, right. Why is it so much easier to stick up for your friends than for your friend? Like, do you know what I mean? When you see people, like, I'm thinking now about my my own, the children that I am currently surrounded by and who are rapidly approaching pre-teenage are all breaking up and getting together. Like, why is it easier to ask somebody else out than it is? Because you just don't have to. And even the immortification of it. Think about, like, the community centre in Rathcool where we used to go to our nightclubs, discos, discos, the local community centre discos. And like, it'd be like, go and ask so-and-so, will he meet you? Or ask so-and-so, will he dance to you? But like, is the more, why is, I mean, I'm now wondering, is the mortification not still the same? Because like, is it just the shuffling back across the room by yourself, having not been danced with? Oh, no, sorry. Like walking up to someone and them saying, no, I don't fancy your friend is way less embarrassing than them saying, no, I don't fancy you. But I'm saying you're literally still 10 feet away and they've just said it and you still know it. Well, as somebody who I once walked up to a guy and said, see my friend over there? And then I went, will you meet me? Because I thought it was really funny. And he went, no, but I'll meet your friend. That was mortifying. That taught me never to ask on my own behalf again, only to ask for other people. Because like, yeah, like when somebody rejects or gives out to somebody else, even through you, you're still like, that's grand. I mean, like, like it's not a personal affront. But like, what other things do you find? I mean, you find everything easier oh, to farm out no? well not from a I mean I'm happy to go and do things Not it's not from a like I'm, I'm sitting at home can't do anything it's more just I do I get really mortified actually it's funny because dad came back from where was he oh he said they went into Jimmy John's which is a sandwich shop here like a subway place and he goes, they went in, they asked for their lunch, they were all sitting down, asked for it. And Bo kept going back up, excuse me, could I have some napkins? Excuse me, may I have more mayonnaise? And dad remarked to me afterwards, like dad is 74 years old. And he goes, it was, he goes, I was mortified. He goes, I would have been mortified at his age asking for those things. I would have just been like, I have no napkins and I have no mayonnaise. That's okay. I'll get on with it. So like, is it actually maybe more of a cultural thing? Because I don't see a lot of people here saying, will you call on my behalf? Will you cancel on my behalf? Oh my God, that's actually a really good point because yesterday, so Brandon has got it in his head that, you know, the bread that we love from Kroger. Yes, where is it? it his, it's gone missing. He's got it in his head that we could probably order this from the bakery, right? That he's like, you need to just go in and say to the bakery, can I order this like once a month, four loaves or six loaves or whatever and go in and pick them up. And I was like, oh, you do it. Yeah, 100% and, you do it. Yeah, and he was like, no, Rosemary, you're a big girl now. It's time for you to do it yourself. I was like, I want you to do it. But like... He would have no problem doing that for himself or for or for me, except for like on principle now he's trying to make me do it myself. Rosemary, I actually think we've got the the answer here. We'll have Bo do it. Oh my God, good point. So you know Bo at my wedding party went, and this is something that I would be too mortified to do as well, even if, it's, even if it was what I wanted. We had this food truck that did like burgers <laughs> and they were doing Brussels sprouts and stuff. And one of the burgers had bacon on it and Bo, the genius, decided he just wanted bacon. So went up and was like, can I just have bacon? Sorry, he went up first in the line ahead of every single other person oh, did and he? then walked around the garden with his massive tray of bacon yes impressing upon everybody his single-mindedness his genius yes yeah and then he asked me to get him some more bacon so when I was making my order I said and Bo would like some more bacon and the guy was like oh, that guy Bo ha <laughs> ha <laughs> 
So we get Bo to do it, except the Bo can only remember one thing and only if you're standing. So you'll have to stand right I beside know, him yeah. at the bakery and continue to whisper in his ear. Oh, that defeats the purpose. I don't, I don't want them to be able to see me. I know. Like I have to be around the corner going, Bo, ask them for this. You know what I mean? I <laughs> can't like, let them see me. It's too embarrassing. Today I said to Bo, he said, can I have some of that oatmeal? Because that's what we call it in America. Can I have some porridge? And I said, yeah, go and get yourself a spoon. So he walks over to the sink. He washes the spoon. He puts the spoon down and then he looks around like, what am I doing here? How did I, how did I get over here? What is my focus? I was like, spoon, Bo, spoon, get the spoon. So he gets the spoon. I mean, gets. honest to God. But yeah, so maybe it is a cultural thing. I mean, I, I would actually be interested to hear. Because I mean, it's not like I'm, I'm not like this at work. Do you know what I mean? It's not like I have these problems. No, no. It, it depends on the, it depends on the context. Like if I'm, I don't know, like if I'm with my kids, I'm probably more author, like I'm more, you know, because I'm doing it on their, it's probably because I'm doing it on their behalf. This goes back to me as a woman in society. I don't feel that I'm worthy of these special favors of these six loaves of bread. You're not worthy of calling the hairdresser yourself. <laughs> <laughs> um, Good one. <laughs> would you, but like, I don't think you'd like to call the hairdresser for me either, would you? Oh, I wouldn't mind. I mean, I called the hairdresser for myself this week just to clarify for everybody who's wondering, like, if I can or can't do it. I mean, Rosemary, it was really hard and I, I would really appreciate it if you would do it. I'm shocked. Oh, I saw you swallow and get ready to talk. I would really prefer if you would do it for me forever. Thank, Why didn't you ask you. me to do it? I always do it for you. Oh, because I was just trying to grab the bull by the horns, Rosemary. I was like, I'm always asking Rosemary. I can't always be leaning on her in this way. She's got bread That's to get. True. Why won't he just do that for me? He will. He will. He will. You just have to ask him. Do you think? Do you think they would actually especially break, break especially bake bread for us? Oh my God! Will you add six loaves for me while you're there? <laughs> you no. do it for me. <laughs> Absolutely not. But this also, my I'll. But what? also, I don't want six loaves at once. I want two loaves every week. So let's get four loaves every week from them. I think they might. Yeah. I mean, I don't even know if they make it themselves. Whereas, like, I have to assume that it's shipped in because otherwise, why is it not there? I think it comes from the big I, Kroger bakery in the sky. I I think they get it. I think they bake a certain amount every every morning. No, it, Rosemary. It's gone when we get there. No, it's not. It hasn't. Beatrice, it hasn't been there for the last you, six months. Beatrice, you have never in your life been to a Kroger before 10 a.m. What? Yes, excuse me. I was in the Kroger recently at 6.30 a.m. buying flowers for a flower arranging event in the office. So yes, I was. I have. Okay, one time. Many times, actually. 6.30 a.m.? Yeah, I was. I didn't even know it opened that early. Yeah, it's tw it's almost 24 hours. I had to go very early. Gross. It used to be 24 hours. Now it's not anymore. Anyway, what else? What are the other things? Uh, I did have Don cancel my... I did have Don cancel my um, orthodon my endodontist appointment recently. But like, I genuinely had COVID, right? But even so... Oh, well, well, anything... Anything that needs to be cancelled, I'd like to have someone else do that for me. Yeah. Like, I tried to get Brandon to cancel the dog grooming appointment recently because Atlas was asleep and I didn't want to wake Atlas up to bring the dog. And then, but dad ended up coming over. But anyway, Brandon, I texted him. I was like, will you please ring? Blah, blah, blah. Was he, at, was he at work while you were sitting at home? Yeah. Yeah. And I think I said, because I'm busy with the baby. But anyway, he. Atlas uh, was, asleep, was asleep, was he? Anyway, <laughs> so he called the groomers and then he texted me and he was like, they said it's a 24 hour can cancellation policy. So you'll have to pay if you cancel. And then I was like, feck it, I'll just go. But like even that I didn't want to do myself. But that's more about you didn't want to go versus you didn't want to cancel. Yeah. No, I didn't want yes. to make the phone call. No, no, no. I didn't want to go, but I also didn't want to make the phone no, call. No. I didn't want to I didn't want the confrontation of them saying it's too late to cancel or whatever. But I actually to deal with that. But actually that goes back to you just didn't want to go, which goes all the way back to you didn't you don't want to show up to things lots of times. I mean both of us but that goes no no I but mean, at least sorry, now i can me, yes but at least now i can acknowledge that i don't want to make plans and i try to avoid making them therefore i don't have to break them i think the thing is that i like to think that i'm the type of person who can make plans and follow through with them and then when it comes near the time i have to accept that i'm not that kind of person but isn't also you like a mean? huge part of it just actually getting up and going you know what i mean because like the idea of good you get cozy and then you get tired and then you're like oh on a normal night should be nearly bedtime and then i'm like oh, i have to go out and do all these things and you're just like oh but like as mom would say, when you get there, you'd have a great time. And generally, you do. Like, why? True. Although, go on. I was just going to say, speaking of going places, we're now not going to the county fair. It'll be rained out of it. Oh, will it? Will it not it'll be, be so mucky? What if it's sunny later on? Will it not be dry? I don't think it'll be sunny enough. It'll last rain this morning. Like, who wouldn't want to go to the cinema, for example? 
who doesn't want to go to see Top Gun for the second time that I didn't get to see with mom, with mom, with dad, which is what I wanted to do. I kept forgetting, but I do want to go and see that with you. It was great. I would also like, well, I, well, I've never seen Top Gun 1 or Top Gun. Full okay. Stop. Well, you have every night at home and every streaming service available to you to watch that. Okay. Well, I'd like to do that, but then also, oh, it just seems like a lot of hassle trying to like figure out timings and the baby being asleep and feeding the baby and blah, blah, blah. I just want to stay at home forever. Or like in my house or in your house is fine. Oh, you know, I was reading a thing today about like pandemic behavior and how nobody wants to do jigsaws anymore. I was like, I still want to do jigsaws. So do I. We haven't done jigsaw in ages. I know. I did start doing that sunset one I then gave back to you, but I gave up. It was so frustrating. It's the first jigsaw I've given up on in ages. See, your your patience level just isn't what it was. Oh my God, you know what? I also gave up on a book this week and I never do that. Even if I don't like books, I'll like doggedly continue with it. But I started reading this book called Breaking Point by Adele Coffey that I'd obviously downloaded on my Kindle at one point and then forgotten about. And I had no idea what it was about. And I got three chapters in, realized what it was about. So it's about a woman who leaves her baby in a hot car. And then <gasps> I was like, I'm not reading this. In. I'm not reading any more of this. No. So I deleted it from my Kindle. Although my friend Kira said it was very good and she w- was not sorry that she had read it, but I was sorry that I read even those three chapters because I was not able. No, I can't. I can't. I can't. I told you I cry about everything at the moment. I can't. I'd be crying. I mean, I don't even think I was crying. I just felt incredibly sick and panicked the whole time. And then I was like, I can't read this. Yeah, I can't. So I quit it. I can't. I, quit it. I, can't, I, can't, I can't read that in your behalf either. But I, I do think, you know, when I have great ideas that you write them down for me very well. Oh, you love, why do you hate writing down your own ideas? Even when you're on your phone, so you obviously have your phone to hand, you could put me on speaker and put it in your little notes yourself. You're still like, Rosemary, write this down. Because I call you when I'm, when I'm, because I'm driving. But you know, you can say like, hey, hey. I just don't want to do it because my phone's going to Yeah, you can say it and, and then what? Make a note. No, Siri doesn't understand, Siri doesn't understand a fucking thing I say to her. I say, hey, 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 I say, hey, Jury, call Don. And next thing you know, it's like calling Daniel Katanki. And I'm like, no, like, no. I say, stop Siri. Oh, yeah. Well, I had to end call Siri. To, and she does none of those things. I had to delete all of my contacts because every time I said call Brandon, it would call a girl I know called Anushka Proeta Brandon. So I had to delete her <laughs> contact so that it would actually call my husband. Like, I never call her. Why would it think I was calling her? That phone has as my favorites. A person I once interviewed with. I How? Like, why would that why be my favourite? Why don't you favorite? delete that person's details, Beatrice? Oh, because what if I ever need to talk to them again in the future? Or stalk them? <laughs> you're you're, you're going to make me call them. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but I, I call you because I'm like, Rosemary, I've had a thought. Here's the thought. Write this down for our topics for our show. You're the organiser. I'm the idea generator. What are you? I'm the idea generator. I'm the idea fountain. I'm trying to think, are there any things that I like would genuinely, because I've often thought that I'd love to have a, a personal assistant of sorts, right? But actually, just what I want is somebody to do my life admin. So I want somebody to like call the hairdresser, do like pick up my dry cleaning. And that's not really what you can get your personal assistant to do, right? Do you know that you so, and Don should actually be married? You know that, right? Why? Remember, remember a couple of episodes you were like, oh, I just always wanted to have a boat. And I was like, yeah, I'd love a little sailboat. You're like, no, I'm into yacht with like a captain oh, yeah. and blah, blah, blah. So basically you're a Goldie Hone from overboard. Don has always had the dream. So Don is an excellent pizza maker. Spent multiple years working at Papa John in a manager capacity. Can spin a pizza on one finger like you've never seen before or however many fingers people pizza spinners use. Go on. Right. Makes great, great pizza. Goes to me. I'd love to have a pizza. A pizzeria, a pizza store, I was about to say, a pizzeria. And I was like, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, that'd be amazing. I was like, that'd be really good. Like, maybe is that something you'd want to do? He's like, yeah. So we start looking at real estate, like, you know, <laughs> Saturday afternoon Zillow search, right? Uh, I was like, oh, what about this? Oh, yeah, looks good. That looks great. Okay, well, uh, okay, well, we'd need, uh, you know, three servers. And I go, okay, well, like, you know, probably have to be you and me to start with. He's like, what do you mean? And I go, well, like, you know, if you're making the pizzas and, um, you know, we'd probably be serving in between making the pizzas. What What do you mean I'm making the pizzas? I go, well, who's making the pizzas? <laughs> he goes, the pizza pizza maker we hire. I'm like, well, who's managing? Like, who's at the front? I said, what are you doing? He goes, 
I'm managing. I'm coming in and out. I'm greeting the clientele. And then I'm going home. Because and then I call up, you know, in the afternoon. I'm like, hey, how's, how's the pizza going? I'm like, what? I said, so what are you trying to do? Like, <laughs> you don't want to actually run this. He goes, I hate to run it. I just want to own it. So that is literally Don. Don just wants to be a landlord, basically. Yeah. Don just wants to be. With um, some good businesses. Yeah. That's all he wants. He wants to be. He wants to be a, 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 a little pizza mog- mogul. Mogul? Well, m- mogul. M- mogul? I started overthinking. Mogul. I started, mogul. I started overthinking it. <laughs> that is actually what I want as well. To be like, to be a to be a yeah. what a life mogul. <laughs> Uh, no, but to be the person who flits in and out while someone else does everything. Yeah, I know. And then to be reaping the rewards. Yeah. A hundred percent. I mean, yeah, don't we all want, want that? That's why I'm, yeah, I'm doing my best with you. You are my life admin. You just, you're just not as... I, like, I was actually thinking the other day about, because a friend of mine was saying she was thinking of trying to get into being a virtual assistant. And I was like, oh, I could do the virtual assistant. She was like, oh, well, like, like, why don't I be your virtual assistant for a couple of hours a week, like in exchange for a reference kind of thing? And I was like, because actually... The, the, like the things I want my virtual assistant to do are my actual work, <laughs> like my actual writing, which they can't do, or like my life admin, which they also can't really do. Like I, I'm perfectly happy to answer my own emails and do my own invoicing and do my own calendar and all that. It's all the actual work that I find difficult. Oh, so you, well, then you should be a virtual assistant for other people and just give up writing. Oh, no, I don't think I'd like to organize someone else's calendar. Oh. I mean, I can tolerate doing my own, but like I don't really enjoy it. Invoicing I enjoy, but only because I'm like, money. Oh. You know what I mean? What are some things you'd enjoy doing for somebody else? I'd enjoy giving them advice. <laughs> <laughs> I'd enjoy giving them feedback on their performance. That's what I'd enjoy. I'd enjoy putting up their wallpaper in their house, decorating their house. I'd enjoy that. I'd enjoy organizing their bookshelves. Actually, I might enjoy... You know what you'd enjoy? Your, your eyes just lit up. You'd enjoy... Marry condoing people's houses and that is a big thing right now I would you should do that I would although I'd also re- although Rosemary do you actually want to go into people's houses it's like I'd enjoy doing your house and my friends houses but like do I actually want to go into rando houses well maybe I would do I want to be going in I don't want to be doing the cleaning do you know what I mean I need a cleaning crew I want to be doing the okay, organizing so, all, yeah all I want to be doing is the organizing and the folding I don't want to be doing the cleaning and I also don't want to be doing the recommending you throw everything out because I think with a lot of people I would just be going burn everything like, I wouldn't be able to be like, this is your terrible taste. You can keep this top. You know what I mean? Oh, I would like to do that. I would love to do that. Because that's the where the judgment part comes in. And even though I'm ENTF feeling, I think I could be ENTJ judging. You could totally be judging. But um, <laughs> but like, like, how would you cope with somebody who just liked terrible clothes and had like a whole load of like, like logo clothing? I just say, you know what? This is your personal brand. That's up to you, I say, but you're going to get nowhere in life. You're not going to be successful. (laughs) But as long as we're all okay with that, then you can keep this wardrobe. Let's hang it back up and make sure it's as clean as possible. You're going to have to make all your own hair appointments forever. Because you're going nowhere. (laughs) You're going to have to call the hairdresser for yourself. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, I mean, if anybody has any deeper thoughts about this like why it is that we don't like to do these things for ourselves why it is that it's easier to call in sick for a friend than it is for yourself it is conflict Please, it's got us know. conflict avoidance that's what it is and you know what in most of these cases it's not even conflict but like uh, yeah no i'm sorry i don't want to i'll do yours and you do mine thanks do you think it's that like you know, they're like the ultimate fear of disappointing people. Do you remember when your parents would be like, I'm disappointed in you and that's the worst thing ever? Is it like being disappointing? I don't think they said that to us. I think they said, you're in trouble, go to your room. But like, no, I, no, I say I'm disappointed. Us, but like, I say I'm disappointed. Oh, yeah, and I don't like, think my I kids care. Oh, uh, well, I would care. Somebody said they were disappointed in me. Don't use that as a weapon now. Oh, 100%. Oh, for God's sake. Thank you all so much for listening to Not Without My Sister. You can get more of our insightful thoughts over on Patreon, patreon.com slash notwithoutmysister for uh, $5 a month, €4.50, I think, which is actually a bargain right now with the exchange rate. Oh, um, You can get an extra episode each and every week and this episode early and ad free. And you get all the stuff that we're afraid to say to mom. And so if you heard the very start of this episode, you'll know over the Patreon it is, it gets gritty. Oh my God. Thank you for listening. Bye. Bye.
Not Without My Sister is produced by Liam Garrity, sound and original music by Don Kirkland, and our original illustration is by Lindsay Nielsen. Petrified, the horror fiction anthology podcast from a darker Ireland is back. Who's there? Petrified tells the chilling tales of ordinary people encountering the supernatural and their terrifying fates. Oh, dear God! Reverend Mother! CrimeReads.com said Petrified is extremely well written, expertly produced and brilliantly acted. Don't leave me here! Petrified, Series 2, out now. <laughs>